Oh, you fuckface. Question for Liam to ask, and is very revealing about his mindset. Asking about whether her body would be out in the ocean by now if she jumped off the bridge <laughs> could be Liam's way to feign concern that they won't find her. And did she tell you she was going to jump off the bridge? No. Oh. If, if she had told me that I could just, she was going to jump off the bridge, there would have been no way that I could have gone to work that night. Hi, baby. I, I went to work and I, okay. I had one of the best friends of my life. I had a bunch of, I made a bunch of money. All my tables were good. I had a great time. It definitely, I would not have been able to do that if I knew something. She inherited a lot of money from her mom. Dude, we're thinking he 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 asked a question. He asked a question to the cops. What if she jumped over the bridge? Okay. I, we're thinking he threw her over the bridge. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they did try to kill her for the money. Is this still Sarah? Yeah. What money? She inherited a lot of money when her mom died. Oh my God. Well, that. Holy shit. And she's cute. Yep. Oh my God. Well, that makes. That, that really makes everything clear. Rich boy. Disgusting shit. Needed more money. Come on now. She's fucking 19 and she inherited her stuff, man. Sounds a little familiar, huh? Uh, no, I wasn't that young. Jesus. No, you were in your 20s. Yeah. And I was an orphan at that time, though. But... Yeah, you wore baby. <laughs> I kept to myself, I didn't bother no one. They got the money, but it was unusable as so old. Ta. The detectives take a break at this point, likely to strategize how to question him from here. They may want to change tactics of questioning and be more confrontational with him. That may also I be would be more confident with new evidence with to him. present him with. Police also like to observe a suspect's behavior when left alone. He's a it's dick. It's not uncommon for suspects to change their behavior or even talk to themselves if left alone for a little while. Despite being on camera, suspects often show more of their true selves when left alone, as they aren't aware they're being watched. Oh, when really? When the detective stepped out of the room, Liam appears to let out a sigh of relief. Liam sits with his head down and his arms crossed in a defensive posture. He looks uncomfortable and nervous sitting there. Aww. He puts his hands over his eyes, rubbing his face. These are all signs of distress. Liam appears to be briefly crying, which seems a little out of place if he truly believes his friend has just left to go live in Canada and isn't deceased as he keeps indicating. It's not uncommon for some suspects to cry when they are left alone as the gravity of what is happening or what they did sometimes sets in when left alone with their thoughts. I feel so bad for him. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, and you're driving down, uh, what street? Not Alley Street. Bradley Street. Bradley Street? Yeah, we're going down Bradley Street. We're going to make a left. And that's the right. We're going to spot. Go down the street. And like, she's like, wait, that was like, I was a joke. Okay. And we turned after her. And she turned off onto the side street. Hey, baby. Yeah. Since you're, since you're out there, can you give me a, the Dr. Pepper? Yeah. I wouldn't mind one. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. I have one. This is good. <laughs> and we got up behind her. And what did she say? She said, Sarah's missing. She started to break down a little bit. It's just like, all right, just let's back over to my house. And that's when I was exactly shut up. Thank you. What did, You're what my did Liam say when his mom said that Sarah was missing? He started to break down a little bit and started his mom. Oh. And hooked his mom? Um, did he answer any questions? Oh. Did 
Is it cold outside? Oh no, my God, no! It's six, it's sixty. Sixty. So I'm imagine any reasonable person, friend, whatever, family member, you probably ask any questions, right? What kind of things Yeah. Madness, man. Wow, I feel blessed now, Eileen, you know. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> that day in climate change, you hear? You hear? Do you want to turn this down to 2.5 again? It's unusual that when they yeah. found out Sarah was missing, neither Preston nor Liam asked any questions about what had happened. The detective again lets this go without confrontation. Preston is being rather evasive and seems to be getting nervous. This is a good time for the detective to start confronting him, to be honest. But he doesn't. He just being slick willy. Let me turn this down a wee bit. I know. What the fuck was that? Like, if I was cutting this, I would try to make it sound like a wee bit better by tinkering on the sound parts. Of it's a very, editor. very rough audio. It is. It hurts the ear. Don't play me like that, bro. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. That poor guy. John Kerry. I know, the bastard. I don't like people taste. Oh, <laughs> Kyla. <laughs> I know you were or you weren't with her. But she's reasonable to make like do. She's missing. What did you guys do? Where did you guys go? What did she say to you? You know, it seems just like I don't know if it's last time when she be like things to be like acting different. Is this the friend that Brad that was bragged to? Like he's not I know he's not the bragger of what he did like mm. but he I think he was the one who set up the recording to mm. get him to brag about it. The cops probably. Yeah, wired him. Probably. Yeah. Unless he did that on his own accord, I don't know. I mean, it is saying on here, voice muffling. Muffling. Thank God for the uh, text. Yeah. Would you have any questions about that? The detective is finally being confrontational with Preston about his lack of curiosity about the police being at their home at 4 a.m. It's very hard to believe uh, yeah, that Preston agree, doesn't remember basically. anything after midnight that night. So, <laughs> Liam wakes up on Saturday and he doesn't talk about Saturday. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're just at the house a couple hours earlier and he asked questions about it. He's not talking about it. I asked him why he was there, but I really don't remember the conversation. That really low voice box. Like, like, bro, I don't remember so shit. I was, was too high. Uh, I was too high, bro. Up. I don't remember uh, shit. Right. Here's some mind going to the bridge. Whoa. No, we had to tell you that. He was with her. You don't remember anything that he said to you? <coughs> Is that. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. You have no recollection at all about what he told you. He, he knows he's full of shit. The detective continues with a confrontational tone. 
By summarizing the answers Preston has given, the detective is showing that he doesn't find his version of events believable. No. As well, the second detective's body language, leaning back in his chair with his arms crossed, also helps to display that he isn't buying the story Preston is telling. That's interrogating This adds some non-verbal pressure yep, to Preston. that's what that is. They say that he was at our house. They say that they went to the movies. They say that they went to the beach. What, what did you say they did? Guy's a demon with that voice. Growling snake voice. I know you can hear everything what the freaking guys say, but the him. Cops, yeah, yeah, the cops, but he's like. <laughs> so, so his mom is crying out in the street, <laughs> and. Liam is now crying and nobody's asking him, like, <laughs> so, what'd you say? Well, there's no questions at all. They said they went to lunch, went out to breakfast, went to the Did you enjoy the pancakes? Did you enjoy the pancakes? No, she's making them now. Oh. Was there any Oh, enjoy you know? your pancakes. Yeah. At any point... Was there ever any conversation? Does anybody care about any, like, asking any of these questions? Like, ah, oh, you're sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your time is enough, Stacy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just enjoy your pancakes. Yeah. You got the munchies? Yas! Pancake munchies! I've been fed so good because of them, like, I gotta take a break from this. Like, seriously, I do. <coughs> yeah, too much salt in the last two days. Notice that the list of topics Preston shares are all the same ones I'm that have good. been discussed during Liam's I interrogation. I gotta take a break from salt. This is a pretty good indication that the boys tried to make sure. Look at those boys together. Ah, what cute little fuckers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> say so. Yeah. What cute little killers they are. Or they were consistent in their stories before Preston came in. This seems especially likely since some of the topics seem rather trivial considering the circumstances. Yeah. All these things are coming out about our relationship with your dad. Too much salt. Still not coming out. Got, what, my yeah. stomach feels bloated. And started on the Too day. much salt. Too much salt. Hmm. Salads. Yeah. They always... No, I just take a break from it for a couple days, and I pee a lot. Yeah. And have a bowel movement, and I, I'm okay. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Bless your heart, babies. The magic thing's off for now, because I don't have... I'm missing some time. We went to the movies, and we watched the movie, or we... I went to her house and we had lunch and watched the TV. I thought that never came up in the conversation. Of course, they had only reminded me of the mind control. I'm using your mind control. I'm using mind control on you? How? Please know. give me a scientific, reasonable answer, Jules, on how I'm doing mind control on you. <laughs> Watching this together is comforting, to be honest. Yeah, you don't have to get so freaked out. Damn it. I'm a shanty simp now because I'm trolling, duh. Wait, hey, that's if that's your priority, <laughs> Jules. I mean, you're like a lot of people, if that's the case. I'm just having fun. Yeah, fuck people what they think about you, Jules. Do what makes you happy. No, the, 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 look, they don't want... The thing is, the, if anybody that's like ostrich or trying to make you feel bad about coming in here and getting talked to in a nice way, they just want you being talked to in a shitty way, Jules. Like, you're having fun here, right? Yeah, exactly. Fuck them. Yeah. You're having fun, right? If you're having fun in our room, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? We if... know you're restreaming and shit. It's cool. We'll do what you want, you know? Yeah. Fuck them. But you might have a little feeling of what it, what it's like to be us, though. You know, yeah, you like might. You're being, you're ostracized for no fucking reason, you know? That's bullshit. 
Yeah. <coughs> People just want to attack just to t attack. I wouldn't worry about them. Good friend. Good friend's help. Fine. It's your answer. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> the detective is implying in various ways that their behavior, or lack thereof, is not No, you're not homeless, and you're welcome. Is missing. He isn't explicitly saying that, well, but the, the message is clear. This makes yeah. Preston think that he isn't coming off credibly, and the detective hopes this will get him to crack. He may have been more successful if he posed the question and stopped talking. By continuing to speak, it takes the <coughs> pressure off of Preston. <laughs> Autumn. Oh, yeah, God bless you, Absent. Oh, my God. I'm really drunk and go into head, into face, in pillow with man peace in places that only the gods can imagine. Comment. That only made sense to you, Odo. That only made sense to you. Re, are you a 4chan or Jules? Cats can open plastic bags quicker than me. Yeah, they can. They're smart little fuckers sometimes. Most of the time. They're not stupid right. animals. They're very, very smart. Let's get back into this. Yeah. Though he didn't mention it before when he was telling the detectives the timeline of his day. Liam and Sarah had gone to the Kearney Bank and were seen on CCTV. Oh. Well, I told you about the bank, but did you go to the bank? I was with him. Okay, it's the way back in Taco Bell. What bank did you go to? Some bad events of Kearney. And what did you do with the bank? No idea. Did you go? You stayed in the car? Yeah. They have begun using the read technique of confronting the suspect with evidence related to the crime. This will likely increase the suspect's stress level even more, and they hope this may cause him to get tripped up or ideally confess. This is also a rather large detail to leave out in his prior accounting of their activities that day. Why don't you stop at the bank? That's an understatement. Something to do with her money. I don't know. She had found money in her house a few months ago. And, uh, you know, she has a lot of box full of money in there. I don't know. Uh -huh. She was taking money out, putting money in there. A lockbox full of money where? In Carney Bank. I don't know. She's told me. What did she tell you about that? Uh, it's just that that's where her money is. The detectives bring up the money Sarah had as it establishes a possible motive for Liam. Initially, ah. Liam acts like he doesn't know much about the money, but as he continues to old speak, hundreds, he keeps dude. revealing more and I love more old details. Hundreds. Oh, those are beautiful. The awesome. out the possibility or he asks spent that maybe them. What an idiot. The to get a response no. from Liam. Since money is such a common motive, it's a logical question to ask. He has all old it money. puts more pressure on Liam. Oh, and how he look at the old would money. I would have kept that forever. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. You wouldn't want to spend that. You'd want to... God, that's going to be what worth... What an idiot. That would be worth so much money. Like, on the internet, you could get more money for the bills. Because it's the old bills. Yeah, yeah, man. That's collector currency. Wow, that's beautiful. Isn't it? <laughs> Is there $2 bills in there? I don't see $2. I don't see $2 bills. No, they just I see made... 50s. They're all... In, in and More 50s than 20s, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is worth a lot now. God, could you imagine that? You resell your money on eBay. <laughs> the bills for more money. Oh, that's so pretty. It is. <laughs> Useful. Whose money did she find? She said that it must have belonged to her mother. What she thought was her mom left it for her. It is in the house. So if her dad were to uh, take her money, He's a selfish she would douchebag. stop her. Her mom. That's just how much money. 
time. She, she never told me. She said it could be. She told me a range. Imagine looking at that and thinking that girl's life is grand. worth no it. Way. Right. No way. She wasn't sure how much money she found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No way. That you wouldn't be sure how much money. Well, she told me the condition of the money was pretty bad. Like it was all stuck together. Well, it was all old bills. Did she give you any of the money? No. Remember? Yeah. There's a good motive now. Do you know that Robert St. Amon's another person that knows about the money besides me, though? Because she had told me that uh, he needed to get something done with his car and he was asking her for money. But that's the only person you know that would have an idea of how much money it would be. William states that her friend Robert also knew about the money. This appears to be an attempt to establish him as another potential suspect. What did she say about Canada on Friday? I don't even remember if we discussed it. Everything's just like blending together at this point. Once again, there are inconsistencies in Liam's statements that weren't there previously. He first stated they talked about Sarah going to Canada, and then that they may have. He has now twice relied on wow. saying that everything is a blur, which seems to be an attempt to explain away any mistakes he makes in his recollection. Yeah, right. It's not, it's not that hard out. to remember what happened that day. Not that I know. She had been just taking calls from multiple family members over the past few weeks. Everyone saying how worried they were about her. So, Friday was the second. Somebody usually could call her and had a conversation with Liam claims family members were calling her saying how worried they were about her. But the detectives seemed to move past it without asking more questions. This piece of information could have given them more insight into what was going on in Sarah's life and her mindset just before she went missing. Did you cry about it? Yeah, that first morning. It's like coming in a woman. Uh, I know, right? We turn the car. Stop whining. Um, well, we're out of the house. Yeah, I can't understand how people can go this far. Like, you just, like, they just don't value life or look at life right. She was really into YouTubiano. What is YouTubiano? Oh, yeah. I'm taking a break. Oh. Yeah, I need to get out of pain, dude. Sorry. What was told to you? Thank you. Until the detective Sarah one came over and started asking questions, I really just. Has anybody told me that she jumped? What do you think, Sarah? You like looking at fences? Maybe you just like looking at them. <coughs> There's no shame in that. and then seems to immediately stop as he continues to talk. His breakdown seems insincere as it lasts only seconds. This is also the first time Preston has demonstrated any emotion at all, even if it is insincere. He may also be crying from stress or fear of being caught. God, the noise. Preston requests to speak to his mom and to take a break. The detectives return to continue questioning Preston oh, about 35 cool. minutes later. Yeah. Mom and dad are still here. They went away from you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so, you 
you wake up, you said you woke up around what time on Saturday? Uh, around like 10 o'clock. Around 10 o'clock. So when you get up at 10 o'clock, um, you remember coming out of your room? I think you need yeah. to. Alright. What do you do when you come out of your room? When they return, the detectives immediately begin asking him questions again. Perhaps to try to unsettle him into revealing something. Maybe. Was it just fun to figure out? Uh... I knew he was up. He was up first. Yeah. At what point do you have a conversation with him about the police showing up at the house at 3 o'clock in the morning or right when they there? Preston takes a very long pause. He knows he has already answered this question and may be trying to remember what he had said previously. The detectives appear to be checking that Preston's timeline of events matches Liam's. Yeah. He continues taking long pauses before responding, as though he's trying to watch what he says. This is, of course, in stark contrast to Preston's usual response style, which was more immediate responses to questions with little to no pauses. I asked him what the police were there for last night. Huh. And just so they just asking questions about like, where he was. Where he was? Yeah. I don't know. Looked down like I didn't have my phone on me that night. Where was your phone? 
have no idea. Still don't know. You guys have it now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened with my phone that day, but I just remember going to work, realizing I didn't have it. And yeah. My mom told me. My guess is he threw it over the bridge with the girl. That's my bet. Hmm. What do you think? Maybe. I'm calling it. <coughs> I did find the phone in the Draper's driveway. I, I could have lost it when I was moving. So you didn't realize, you didn't realize you lost your phone until you got to work. Yeah. What, Eileen? The woman who married the Eiffel Tower is banned from there now? She was grinding on it with a skirt and no knickers. People saw. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, she married the Eiffel Tower. She had to fuck it and consummate it. Yeah. The marriage. <coughs> okay. I mean... <coughs> She needed some pull. Yep. I I tried not to use my phone as much as possible. Why? I don't know. It's a distraction on different social medias. I just call, text. I don't really use it too <laughs> just often. Stick some knickers on it and off you go. No. <laughs> I mean, Say probably like an average person. <coughs> too crazy. What kind of phone do you have? I have um, Samsung Galaxy. I think it's a. I think no one's called. No, I'm just dead. Like the. So it's best reading song? Yeah. It's all I just bought at Walmart uh, Saturday morning. But why'd you buy that thing with that phone? Couldn't find my other phone. <coughs> and that's multiple employers. And Stuff like that, so. Liam immediately contradicts himself. He has changed his answer to how often he uses his phone three times. Likely after the initial lie, he realized that the detectives could easily obtain his phone records and see his usage. Did you try reaching Sarah after, um, after you left her house? No, there's no way he could have. Why? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there no way you I can do that? I lived in my roommate. I had my cell phone. He his cell phone. Put it back at your mom's house. It's right on the same property, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty much, but no. I didn't even... I just went straight to work. Straight home, straight to work. Well, we have the, the detective big, intentionally have looks at his notepad and then asks him a question. He may or may not have been... No way. No way. No way. You gotta scroll up a little bit. There it is. The lady who fed her victims to the pigs <coughs> was, my, was my neighbor. No way, Scarlet. Really? Are you for real? Crazy. How did it smell up there? Yeah, she was odd. Yeah, she probably... Yeah, she was friendly. Oh. Odd but friendly. That sounds right. And fucked up. But wouldn't let anyone on our property. I wonder why been referring to notes, but he wants Liam to think he already has evidence to support the answer to the question he's posed. This is another common technique police will use, <coughs> even referring to blank paper sometimes to give the impression they have evidence they don't in fact have. This tactic works extremely well with many suspects. She, she called your, she called your, your number on my house line a couple times. My cell phone number? Was, what was it? Why was she saying that? Why? It would be during the time that you were there at the house. While I was at the house? Or what time would that be? It could be in the afternoon or right around the time that you left to go to work. Come on. Did you, try? Did you tell her that you lost your phone? Come on, dude. I didn't even know that I lost my phone. Or when you went to work? No. Does he no realize how dishonest he's looking? Yeah, you know, perhaps. No. No, Liam's statements aren't adding up. The fact that Sarah had been calling the <laughs> phone the times he claims he was with her doesn't make sense and is very suspicious. Yet the detective doesn't ask him any more questions about it and never really presses Liam on anything. In 
instead, he moves past a lot of his statements that either don't like, make sense or contradict himself. Do you himself. see that Donald Duck yeah, freaking? Like he was high. It was Donald Duck, but it was um the, the a Starry Night behind him. I love that. He I want that. High as fuck. He probably was high, man. Donald smokes weed. He has to. That voice. That's definitely a weed voice. <laughs> yeah. It has to be, man. He, he has so much anxiety, he has to do it. It's it's his medicine. Like, seriously. Not. <coughs> Again sits in silence, waiting for Liam to fill the void. Liam's excessive nodding starts up again. That's so funny when it's sped up. situations where she's heard me try to hurt herself in the past that I actually didn't even remember. It wasn't until Maggie called me yesterday and reminded me. How long ago was that? Um, three years ago. Any close friend of Sarah would be genuinely concerned and distressed when recounting this story about how she tried to hurt herself. Instead, Liam is simply sitting there for over an hour, spilling all of his close friend's dirty laundry, and implying that Sarah might have taken her own life, all the while not being a bit no, concerned about her. No. People with antisocial <laughs> or narcissistic personality disorder often engage in smear campaigns where they will speak very negatively and very convincingly yep. about someone, often spreading lies, exaggerations of the truth. or e That's what a lot of people like doing to me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that but yeah, it. I'm the liar, but yet yeah, they're doing the smear campaigns. Okay. That's exactly what's done to you. Yep. Exactly what's been done to you. And lots of exaggerations of the truth. Exactly. Lots of that. Mainly that. Mm-hmm. And lots of lies, too. That's true. <laughs> Mixed in. That's true. Even just their own negative theories or suspicions about that, someone. That's everything. It's a right method there. that the yep. ADD person you, uses you. to do damage control when they fear they will be exposed. Or when they are trying to get out of trouble, they will do it to family, friends, their own partner, or anyone who threatens to expose them. You know. But I don't want to expose anyone. I want to leave people fucking alone. Oh my God, earlier I said he was doing a smear campaign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an actual term, yeah. Yeah. Turn box up all these personal belongings. And you help her carry these belongings to a neighbor's house. And you accepted belongings. You accepted things on Friday as well, or this morning. How, how did they get to your house? We dropped it off. It was on Friday, that was three days ago. We I mean, have, this isn't the first time we've done something like this. No, absolutely. So, you're not blocked. Just hear me out. It's, it's just, no, you're not black <laughs> absent. It doesn't make sense that you do all these things. We're doing all right. And you go out to lunch with her on the way back from Taco Bell. You would uh, have you stop in the bank so she can take care of her money. And then you ask no questions. She doesn't, you don't know, inquire about anything. She doesn't share anything with you. Well, I've known about it. It's not, I don't know what she told me. She has already told me. Well, it's what I like. I mean, if I was the car here, I'd have to stop and get paid for cash. Well, see, I'm just telling you, I got to deposit this year. It's like I have to stop on the bank. So gross. That is no. It's like, all right, I'll stop in the same car. Yep. Same car. Want to see you to be here or something? And then <laughs> we were at her house. That's a no for me. She said the county had to be up, like, recently. Well, that's good. At that point, you had the phone in the car. So you had already dropped uh, the, the, the logs off the process. You realize that I didn't have my phone number at that point. Yeah. The detective now confronts Liam, but only slightly. An accusation or confrontation of guilt will sometimes be enough to get someone to crack. It can also get someone to clam up and stop talking. But the detective should take that risk at this point in the interrogation, because they haven't gotten very far with Liam. Liam slips up and catches himself lying about having his phone. The detective is ah. making sure he doesn't buy the story Liam is telling him, which likely is adding stress to Liam. Because yeah, I was, I was using my phone and entertain myself while she was in the bank. So I did have my phone on me in the car. 
The detective sits in silence again, waiting for him to keep talking. This technique has proven useful on Liam, so he deploys it repeatedly. A lot of interrogation is trial and error, as people can differ in terms of what gets them talking and what techniques work for them. When was the uh, initial phone call? Was it one o'clock? That you were communicating with her? Yeah. It was yeah, about just before one o'clock. Yeah. I must have been on 32 o'clock when I got to her house. The detective begins pulling documents out of a file pocket that looks to contain phone records while he asks Liam about the timing of his day and calls. This is to try to make him feel like the detective already knows the answers to the questions he's asking. Liam has been caught in numerous lies surrounding his phone activity and a few other details, but hasn't confessed to any involvement in Sarah's disappearance. Okay? Of course yeah, he wouldn't. I told the guy out there that my car's parked on Main Street. I don't know if I've been there for two hours yet, but... Oh, no, you'll be alright. You'll be alright. Right. 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 Um, we stepped out of the room. You can find one room. Um, you, you, your, your dad is here right now. Uh, your dad came down. Yeah. Um, did you tell him that you guys came and told him that you were coming down? Yeah. Um, so your mom contacted an attorney on your behalf? And your dad contacted an attorney on your behalf. So there's no, now two attorneys that um, are expressing an interest in, to represent you. We're not going to talk to you any further today. We do appreciate you coming down. Yeah. So if you hang tight here, I think your dad and maybe one of the attorneys, I don't know, would want to talk to you. Huh? Um, so kind of just, if you, if you don't mind, yeah, no. um, you don't have to, but um, we're done um, you know, talking to you at this point uh, for today. So we appreciate it, okay? All right, thanks. Thank you. No problem. Bye. The detectives were unsuccessful in obtaining a confession, but they have caught Liam in numerous inconsistencies and nailed down a timeline. It appears they suspect Liam knows more than he's letting on. Yeah. However, they will now have to find other ways to get evidence, since he'll likely not be giving any more statements to them based on his attorney's advice. The detective may have been more successful in confronting Liam with more direct accusations and questions. God, why do rich Sarah's parents defend their children like this? Impressing him on the fact that they don't believe she left for Canada. They never mention the possibility of foul play at all, which is a distinct possibility. They should have asked more open-ended questions and then asked more follow-up questions on statements Liam made. You know, uh, Liam, you know, uh, Sarah, any kind of relationship with the friendship? Do you have any kind of romantic relationship with like that? No. Well, welcome back, Billy Ann. How are you, darling? How are you? I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that he died and he rose three days later i confess that jesus christ is lord i'm sorry but a person cannot utter that out of their mouth unless they truly believe Gymnastics is written in scripture that whoever confesses with their mouth is the abundance of their heart. likely reveals this information unprompted because he knows the police will uncover it anyway. It's strange that he waited to mention this until now, especially since he was asked explicitly about his relationship with Sarah and how well he knew her. A friend trying to help would normally want to offer as much information and detail as possible you to help think. with the investigation. I don't know if you guys already know about her and her friend, uh, Maggie, last 
Well, I'm not going to worry about myself. If people don't believe me, that's their problem. God judges me. information to corroborate Liam's theory that Sarah possibly took her own life. Aww. This may be something he and Liam discussed, and he realized he'd forgotten to mention it earlier. The detective intentionally sits in silence to see if Preston will elaborate yeah. unprompted to keep speaking. What else would be important for us to know that we She ran away from Canada, but that's just my happened. opinion. There was no sign of Sarah, no body, and no one was admitting knowing anything. The only thing that was clear was that something wasn't quite right with the stories Liam and Preston were telling. Sarah's disappearance remained a mystery for a few months and was investigated by authorities as a missing persons case. That is, until someone came forward with information that finally blew the case wide open. What? What are they questioning? Oh yeah, a lot. Is that what? Uh, ah, he uh, taped his friend. They've been, uh, they were on my ass. First it was just normal police. They were on my ass, and I had to go in and get interrogated by them multiple times. But then it kept moving up levels, and now it's a federal case. Then got the FBI. So you've been laying low, I guess. Oh, yeah. And not even, that's not even the worst part. The worst part of it is I thought I was walking out 50 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. Oh my she god. Had safe and she took money out. And she only had. That's what he cares grand. about the money. And this money, I don't know if it was Bert or something. It's old money, terrible quality. Right. I don't even know if I can put any of it in the fucking bank. Right, because it'll probably, it'll probably look sketchy, right? It looks sketchy and it'll look like it's Sarah's money, especially if it's a federal investigation. Right. If they're looking for the guy that? who has the what old pieces of money. shit? Right, because it's probably like the, the old dollar bills. It's okay. not like the new shit, because the hundred dollar bills have changed now. Exactly. No, it's from the 80s, dude. It's old. And then... What, she found in your house or something? Huh? She found in your house. Yeah. She spent a lot of money. She spent a lot of money. And I didn't... I didn't even get a quarter of it. 
Sierra Leone, what, seven, seven grams? Somewhere around there. She has a lot of money, but I don't, I didn't even get a quarter of it. <laughs> it's not your money, asshole. What a piece of fucking shit he is, man. No, I, I didn't even try to do anything with it because it's in such bad like, shape. Like, I need to play low and then maybe, like, take some shit up and see if I can put it in the bank. So what, do you have to hit it? Yeah. I have it. Would you have it? You're handsome. Thank you, buddy. You're yeah. welcome. First, it was in my house for a long time, but then I stopped trusting Preston. Yeah, what's the deal with Preston? Was he... No, he's cool. He was... Did he end up, like, helping you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sarah wasn't missing. Liam had murdered her. One of Liam's friends, Anthony Curry, had been interviewed by police that same December about Sarah's disappearance. A month later, on January 24th, Anthony came to the police to tell them that he actually knew something about Sarah's case. What he revealed that Liam shit. had told him on Thanksgiving that he was planning to rob and kill Sarah for the money her mother had left her and that she had just found. He went on to claim that at first, because Anthony was a filmmaker, he thought Liam was pitching him an idea for a movie when he talked about killing I Sarah. Just posted it However, he soon learned that wasn't the case at all, and Liam again? had actually killed her. Anthony told police that over the past month he'd grown terrified of Liam and began you to worry that Liam was going to kill him or hurt his family, presumably because of what he knew. After revealing all of this to the police, Anthony was asked to secretly record his conversations with Liam, and oh. he agreed. A week later, on the 31st, Anthony secretly videotaped Liam. We can imagine that he was probably more than just a little there nervous as he drove over to meet I just up with Liam, it. who he would soon realize was yeah. a cold-blooded killer, singing mm -hmm. along with tunes to likely attempt to calm his nerves. It's good, man. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? You want a cigarette? No, I'm good. I quit them. Oh, yeah. I was smoking. A lot of cigarettes while I was tripping. I was smoking a lot of, a lot of yeah. cigarettes, but I was tripping I balls, like man. Whole, like two months straight. <laughs> what were you doing? Sitting around. <laughs> what you been up to? Hiding from the cops. What's, what happened? Dude, you can't blame me for doing this, right? I gotta feel you up real, real quick, right? <laughs> no disrespect. I'll show you. No disrespect, okay? Nothing. Yeah, I got the FBI on my ass. All right. I had planned Sarah's All right, no situation point. for me to be interrogated by cops. Like, that was whole part of my plan, to make me look not guilty. This dude's a like, narcissist, what, what straight you up. Okay. You didn't hear that? It was all over the news. Right, but I didn't know if you, like, went through it. Yeah. And the worst part is, we threw her off the bridge. And I knew the it! They did throw her off the bridge. Out. It's probably all the way out in the ocean. And it's frozen, so she's not coming up anytime soon. She, her body's probably at the bottom of the ocean, or she got eaten by a shark or something. Uh, bro, this is like a fucking movie, bro. Yeah. And, dude. Alright, so, I'm hanging out with her. She has, we, we went to the bank, she took some money out, not all of her money. We're counting it out, and then she goes to walk out the front door. I choke her out, drag her. My biggest problem was the dog, and her dog laid there and watched as I killed her. Didn't do anything. Her dog. What, what kind, kind of dog? Is? Yeah, what kind of dog is that? It's like some. Was it a big it dog? It looks like a beagle, but it's like the size of a great dane. What the fuck? Jeez. Nobody was there. Grandma. Was no, there. nobody was there. Even her dad wasn't there. He was in Florida. Yeah, you said that. He was in yeah. Florida. So. Aw, Snow Queen, I see all your comments. I love y'all. I've known Shannon Red for years, like nine, and they don't know me. Aw, God yeah. bless you, Snow Queen. Oh, God bless you. Ugh. These people are nuts. I have to leave. I dropped my phone at Sarah's house. My phone was at Sarah's house. Oh, my God, he like, dropped it. Good, God, yeah, God got you. I couldn't find it. God bless I to go you. To I had timed everything out so that God got him. You see that? He he was like, I'm just gonna leave this behind. Yeah. Boop. I'm gonna get you that way. 
What a fucking psycho. He, he said he planned, he even planned for the interrogation, he said. Yeah. He knew he was going to be in an interrogation, so he planned for that, too. Fucking wow. There's people like this out there. I don't know why people want to do this shit. It makes no sense to me. They want to kill? Just like... He could have just stole the money and left the girl alone. Just like we want to be here watching... Like, be on Twitch with people and watching this and smoking Delta. There's people that want to kill that much. I can't. That's nuts. Yeah. To me. <clears throat> What's IP2? Maybe I don't want to know. Dude, what were you doing? <laughs> Strangling someone? I couldn't find it, dude. It ended up being an app. Aw, thank you. I make my mind about people. I like y'all. I love y'all, Rev and Shanny. I'm scared where the fuck are they? I let them up. Oh, it's okay, honey. God bless you. You're welcome, Snow Queen. This is nuts, man. He's he's literally, t he talks about strangling her like it's nothing. I know. Just nothing. That's nuts. And I he, don't think this would, is the first. He was a lifeguard. I don't think this is the first time he's done this. No, he's killed a lot. I Probably think. as a lifeguard. Yeah. Oh. Andy Dick. I oh, think. no, it's my friend. No, they, they're talking about Andy Dick. Oh. in the driveway. Oh, we must have dropped that. Huh? We must have dropped when I was crawling to get in the car. At one point, while the boys are talking in Anthony's car, someone knocks on the window and asks for a ride, which they refuse. Oh, who's that? Oh, how do you roll this window? It's over. Can you guys do me a huge favor? Give me a ride, like, right down the road? Nah, I can't. I got so much in my back. I'm sorry, I can't. Really? Yeah. Please? Nah, I really can't. I'm sorry about that. That was an angel. Yeah. I think that's a... No, that's an angel. <laughs> that was an angel. Yeah, I agree. You should have taken the road with that angel. They could have told you something you needed to know. <laughs> oh, well, you refused. You refused. You might be entertaining... Angels unaware, dudes. She looked all fucking jumping yeah. down or something. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah, hell, I'm not giving you a ride so she can steal my fucking equipment. Yeah, yeah. You don't know how you're talking. So you, you're worried about a crime being done to you, <coughs> but you can't seem to realize the crime you did to a poor, innocent girl because of money. But, oh, no, you can't steal my shit. What a fucking loser. Is that how you feel when you're in someone's out, in someone's <coughs> car? Is you're, you're afraid of, stealing, of, of people stealing from you? Maybe it's because you're the fucking thief. You killed a girl for fucking money. You fucking piece of shit. I don't and it seems that Anthony had good reason to worry that Liam or even Preston might do something to him or his family because of what he knew. You are the only person on this planet that knows besides Preston. And Preston doesn't know that you know. <sighs> and I think we should probably get back to our house. Because yeah, I gotta get him back to <coughs> I got to work at 6 a.m. <laughs> because Preston doesn't like this idea. He doesn't like that you didn't just come to the house. And if he knows that you know, I don't want him, you know, I don't want there to be a chance. I'm not no f***ing rat, bro. Yeah. You don't have to f***ing question me. I'm in Brooklyn, they have to question me. I, 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 I know you're not a rat, but we right. gotta, we gotta play it safe. Anyone. No, yeah, I understand. Man. It could be anyone. And I don't want Preston to, to think that he has to kill you and take you out because you are the only person that knows. <laughs> you know, I tried to, tried to imply that you might know, and he gets really upset. So maybe don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't yeah, tell him. maybe yeah. not. Don't tell him. But you're the only person besides Preston that knows. And I told you that in the beginning. That's how it's going to be. 
I plan to stay out for about six months. Wow. Holy Without it. Yes. Wow. Six months, dude? What was it about this girl that he... Why? It was the money she had. The All right. money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, she didn't give him, and she didn't give him any. Fucked up. Fuck you, dude. Oh, I can't wait to see him nailed and see his reality just splinter. Cocky, stupid son of a bitch. Just dead eyes. <coughs> yeah, he never found her body. Horrible. They never found her body? What an idiot telling people about it. <coughs> Anthony coming forward. Hey. Liam may have gotten away with it. Liam McCatasney was arrested on February 2nd, 2017. Pig. It was a measly $7,000. <coughs> As you can see, Liam was brought into an interrogation room in handcuffs. His demeanor doesn't look like that of a person who killed his childhood friend in cold blood after sharing a meal together and planning the crime for half a year for a small amount of cash. He spends the next few hours sitting alone with his head We'll bent, be doing Chris Watch tomorrow, Odo. Investigators suspected that Preston Taylor knew a lot more about what happened than he let on in his initial interview. So he was also brought in for questioning. While Liam remains quiet, Preston, on the other hand, finally had a lot to say. All right, Preston, you can have a seat right over here. I'll be right with you, okay, Matt? No. While Liam was handcuffed, Preston was not. This could be an indication that the police want Preston to Yeah, we could do Casey Anthony tomorrow, Liam. too. That way, they may be able to earn his trust and use it against Liam. After being left alone, Preston looks around the room and bites his nails. He appears nervous and uncomfortable. <laughs> the detective instructs him where to sit and strategically places him furthest from the door. The room is stark and has nothing on the walls or inside it besides some chairs and a table. This is done intentionally to not distract the suspect and to make them feel on edge. Hey, Preston. Sorry to keep you waiting, man. How you doing, all right? Yeah. You remember me from uh, December? Yeah. My name is Brian uh, Weisbrow. I'm a detective with the prosecutor's office. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you ever met um, Detective Wilbrecht. Mike Wilbrecht from uh, Neptune City. Uh, he was not uh, with us when we had spoke to me down in Belmore. Yeah. But uh, I, I first just want to tell you thank you for cooperating, coming down today to talk to us. We appreciate it. I know you guys said you have a lot of questions. Um, uh, we, had, we had spoken to you out in the car and transported you here. Baby. I told you that we were not going to talk to you in the car. Um, we wanted to do it in the setting. Talking to you in the car is not appropriate. Um, so I, we'll get to all your questions. We're happy to answer anything that you have. But, um, <laughs> we do want to talk to you. Um, and uh, before we it do talk to you, we're going to do right absent? The two detectives are very friendly as they think Preston is ready to confess fully. They read him his Miranda warnings and It'll have him a to write to indicate that he understands them. This is the best It'll practice, save your especially life. with a suspect who is either young, uneducated, or unfamiliar with the criminal justice system. Um, Preston, obviously, you know why Mike and I want to talk to you today. Um, it's the same reason why um, Detective Mahoney and I spoke to you um, back in December. Okay, it's about Sarah. Um, we know <coughs> what happened to Sarah um, ever since she was reported missing. The Neptune City Police Department, the Belmont Police Department, and the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office has been working tirelessly to find out what happened to her, and we did. Okay, um, we know what your involvement in, in it was. All right, we want to talk to you about that. <coughs> um, what we're most interested in knowing, not necessarily what happened, because we already know that. We want to know why it happened. All right, we want to know why Liam did what he did. What did he do? He killed Sarah. Okay? And we know you know that. Right? You know that. I know. Right. Her dad can't even see her have her body about. for the funeral. Right. I want you to know that He's probably um, kicking himself he left her at home. We understand that people put themselves in positions that looking back they regret. We get it. You're a nineteen year old kid. You have a whole life ahead of you. Right? 
you got to lay it out for us as to why it happened, right, and why he did what he did. Yeah. How much money are we talking about? He says that she had anywhere from upwards of fifty to hundred and fifty thousand dollars left to her in cash from her mom. Okay. Where did she get the money? From her mom when she passed away. Okay. She found a That's so gross. This, this story. She, found a, she found a box in their old house now <clears throat> that they keep just for storage that had a note and all much money and he wanted to sort of try to get his hands on as much of it as possible. Okay. The detective immediately begins I the definitely want to see Gypsy. The technique. <laughs> this step is when the interrogator informs the suspect of the evidence against them, implying in a confident manner that they already know the suspect is involved in the crime. The suspect's stress level increases, and the interrogator may invade the suspect's personal space to increase the discomfort. Here, the detective leans in towards Preston Gypsy as he is speaks. Gypsy the same age as your daughter. minimizing the severity oh, of the bless. situation and downplaying the consequences of Preston's involvement. The detective hopes he will be more honest and forthcoming with them. At some point, either before Sarah was killed or shortly after, Liam had been bragging to his friends about having a lot of money. But later, when one friend asked to borrow money from him to buy a camera, Liam said he didn't have any. Liam refused to tell the friend why he no longer had money unless they spoke in person. But he added that he was running out of data on his phone and that he was unemployed. We now know what that Liam had been expecting to steal a lot what of money from Sarah. Loser. Instead of fifty thousand to one hundred thousand dollars, Liam only found around ten thousand dollars. He once again ominously warns the friends that he can't explain what is going on over the phone. Did he tell you ahead of time that he was going to do this? Yeah. How how long do you think he had he planned to do this? About a month. Which wasn't too serious at first. <laughs> Do you remember the first time he told you that? No, it wasn't a month. It was six months. The first time he told me about it, him and, uh, him and Sean came into Clancy's where I was working, and he just said, like, no intentions at this time, but Sarah just found a bunch of money, and that was it. And then it wasn't until about a month or two later he said that he was coming up with the idea. Okay, what did he, what did he tell you he planned on doing? Taking her out and then find somewhere to dispose of the body. Oh my okay, God! He was taking her out, leaving, straight her. Okay, and then he was going to dispose of her body. Did he tell you what he planned to do with her body? Why did this idiot fucking tell people this shit? Like, did he think he was like being all edgy and cool by that? Something. Oh, she's she's licking her ass. I'm so, I guess Stacia. She's saying I kiss my own ass. Watermelon, you know you're licking your ass in front of people. And she goes back to it. I guess she doesn't care. All right, back to the interrogation. Okay. Um, how did you? Let's, I want to bring you back to. Um, I see watermelon as being a good co-host. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. Was it Friday? Uh, not um, anymore. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what you did that day? Did you work? Go to school? I went to work with my dad. Do you remember where you worked? She's like, whatever. I do what uh, I want. Exactly. Like, uh, was, okay. Uh, doing a construction job? Yeah. I was working with my dad. We were taking out a bathtub. Okay. Whole She's a funny the girl. Okay. And I got home just as he was getting ready to run out the door for work. And he was like, dude, I did it. I need you to follow me later with your car. And I just didn't really know what to do. I go along with that far. Okay. When he said that he did it, did you know what that meant? Yeah. What did you take that to mean? I turned to the street. Killed Sarah. Um, so the her body was still at the house. Oh. In his uh, it's rank. The detective is establishing premeditation. There's no legal obligation for Preston to report what Liam was planning, but helping him before or after the murder is a serious criminal offense. Despite being honest, Preston is using minimizing words to downplay the horrific nature of what Liam did to Sarah. 
He speaks in a monotone and is emotionless, even though Sarah was his friend. He's a piece the detective of shit. Is establishing a timeline now that he thinks Preston will be more honest with them, and now that they have a better idea as to what really occurred. Without realizing it. Do I remember you from a while ago? I'd like to say yes, but I don't, and I'm sorry, and I feel really bad. Like, I wish I could remember. But I talked to so many people, and I'm sorry. JB and his show in <laughs> Shanny's 420 vid from years ago. That was funny as fuck. Jesus Christ. Preston implicates himself further by stating that Liam simply said, Dude, I did it. Showing Preston was involved in the planet. He's all she's a witch. He's reaching. Yeah. I don't care. If he hadn't been, he wouldn't have known what Liam meant by this very vague statement. I got home just as he was getting ready to run out the door for work, and he was like, dude, I did it. The detective catches this and has him confirm he knew what it meant, so that he can't deny being involved in the planning later. I choke her out, drag her into Thank the bathroom. Thank you, Stacia. And then I had to go straight to work. So mm -hmm. Preston came over, took the body, put it in the bushes, and then I was at work. I had a full like night of work except i left work a couple times which looks sketchy right. look for my phone though right. which is a reasonable like thing to do yeah you gotta look for your phone you which it, it's kind of like me losing my phone was kind of a good thing Could... it's all good just wish you didn't get sick though yeah i did it but i showed i showed people that you can't die from overdosing on it <laughs> You, you'd buy a print of that in the flame of me lighting the... Oh, that... There's a t-shirt. <laughs> hey. I didn't do anything bad. I just... I just loved life. And I was giving like, people oh, a good time. He lost his phone. His phone. He's going back and forth between his house looking for it. And then... I get off work that night, go straight over, press and I go over to her house, take her safe, bring that over to my house before we do anything. Then we take her body out of the bushes and drag it over to her back. Oh fence. my god. And I crawl, get into her car, and I back up. She ha There's a security camera across the street. Right. So I had to back, I had to act like her. I watched her every time she backed out. She does the same thing. So I backed out exactly like she did. And drove did you off. put her in the trunk? No, I put her in the passenger seat of her own car. And then Preston and I had these washed cars to communicate with. We just used them again. What the fuck? What the fuck? When you said you looked like Lady Liberty, but of weed, I lost it. <laughs> he did, though. That was great. He watched to make sure if anyone saw her car pulling out, they'd not think it was someone else, so he watched exactly how she pulls out. Yeah, exactly, Autumn. So I was driving, and I had her buckled in, in... The passenger right, so she looks like she's just sleeping. She's just sitting up. And my my plan was for me, I underestimated my own strength and how much a dead body would weigh. Because it's lint it's lint weight. Yeah. I got up on top of the bridge to throw her off. My my plan was I was gonna throw her off, run over, jump over the divider and get into Preston's car. What and the fuck? I go up, open the door. And hook her, pull her out, start dragging her to throw her over, and then cars start coming up. I see, like, headlights coming. I try to get her over, and I can't. My leg up. Like, the weight from her body, like, made me fall, and my leg, like, went up. So now I'm limping, my leg's up, and there's three cars coming up. So I grab her body. Dude, I had superhuman strength, and I threw it in the car, and I... And picked it up, and her feet were up here, and her foot, was, her head, her head was down there, and three cars go by, and I'm losing my. Oh, you have a good one, Billy Ann. You enjoy your babies. 
it could have been a cop. Yeah. And then, I mean, the police station is like right there. Yeah, it? yeah. And then Preston comes over the bridge, goes around, makes a U-turn, comes up behind me. The two of us throw the body over, and then we we're out. Oh, so you needed help? I needed yeah. help. Yeah. I pretty much hung her. Like, I just. I picked her up and had her just like dangling off the ground and she just pissed herself. And oh, yeah, she what the fuck? Her and then that was it. And it took me a half an hour to kill her. I thought I was going to be able to choke her out and have her out in like a couple minutes. Choked her out for 30 minutes. I choked her out and then she was just laying there having a seizure or something. So then I just. I had to. I got a shirt and I just shoved it down her throat so she wouldn't throw up or anything and held my finger over her nose and set a timer that's the only time i had my phone and it took me like a half an hour after i hit start on the timer what a fucking lunatic this, this is the thing about like heists there's so much shit that you can't account for because you don't know yeah you, you don't know until it happens Liam then went to work, as though he hadn't just killed one of his closest friends. He likely continued on with his night as normal to have an alibi for at least part of the night, and to appear like he wouldn't have had time to commit the crime and move her body. Preston is describing all of his actions as if Liam made him comply. There's no mention of Liam threatening him or otherwise forcing him to assist in this crime, and Preston is looking more and more like an accomplice and co-conspirator. I'm going to tell you where her yeah. body was. Yeah. Uh, downstairs. Okay. Um, and what did he ask you to do? Best to uh, help him get the, the her into the car. And he drove her car up the fence from her, and I just came up behind. Okay. Came up after okay. Now, prior to um, you said you got home from work right around the time that he was he was going to going to work, right? Just what time do you think that was about? Okay. It's still daylight. Okay. Did you go to, did he have you go to her house and move her before you got home from work? I see you're shaking your head. What does that mean? Yes. Okay. What did he ask you? Yeah, Mainly you wanted me to look for his phone because he dropped it. He dropped the it his phone. His phone. Uh, his phone. Uh, he was there. Where's the phone? So, so you went over there by yourself? Yeah. Okay. And when you got to the house, was there anybody home? No. I just said that her and grandma were stopping by later. That's why I had to be. Okay. How did you get into the house? You left the back door on the left. All right. Do you remember, did you drive your car over or another car? I drove my car. All right. Where did you park it? You parked it uh, across the street from Holly Street. There's that garage on the right, and there's the little dead end street. Okay. Right on the dead end with half the fence and right Okay, so you didn't pull up in front of her house? No. Okay. Were well, you by yourself or with, were you with somebody else? I was by myself. Okay. Preston admitting he parked his car away from Sarah's house shows that he knew he was going over there to do more than look for Liam's phone. Yeah. And what he was planning to do was something he didn't want anyone to see. So you accessed the property from the back? Okay. And you went into the back door? Yes. And there was nobody else home? All right. And what did you see when you went into the house? She... I saw her body in the downstairs back uh, bathroom. Okay. And can you describe what you saw when you went into that area there? Just her body just lagging over the toilet. It was over the toilet? Yeah. Okay. And what was she wearing? Uh, the jeans. Okay. Did you see anything unusual about her body? Did you see uh, any? Her jeans. Okay. Um, did you see any blood? Did you see any bruising, any marks or anything on her body? She was starting to turn pale. And that is karma and absence. Purple color, but color like bruises or anything. Okay. Um, and you see, so you went into the back door. Did you? The bathroom is right, right, pretty close to that back door. Yes. Yeah, so Baby, do you want to keep that? No, I'm good. Okay. Oh, and I'm upstairs okay. to so look for the house phone. Okay. Where in the house did you go? Look for a storm. Oh, it's in Sarah's room. So you, did you leave Sarah in the bathroom or did you do something with her? No, I pulled her out back. Okay. Just sat on her on the side. All right, so when, how did you carry her? Did you throw her on your shoulder? Did you drag her? Just picked her up on her shoulders, dragged it. Okay. 
um, and you took her out what door? Okay. And when you came out of the back door, did you go to the left or did you go to the right? To the right. Okay, so was that towards the driveway or away from the driveway? Away from the driveway. Okay. For the first time, Preston oh. seems upset. Punk. However, his reluctance to talk about this is to protect himself, not because of what he did to Sarah. They f they killed her for a hundred k, but all they found was ten k. Yeah. Yep. And how far? Uh, when you came out the back door, how far away, like away from the door, did you go? About 15, 20 feet okay. under the bushes by the back fence. Okay. Is there, is there a shed there? Yeah. No. Okay. The casual way in which Preston discusses Sarah's dead body is disturbing. His tone never changes, and he seems completely unbothered. It was dark out by the time I got over there. Yeah, he gives got no fucks like to this shit. Okay. None. Um, were you able to see, or did you need a flashlight or something like that? I was able to see. Okay. Um, so then you, you leave. Um, you go back through the backyard to where your car was parked? Yeah. You got back in your car? Yeah, I went back to my house. Okay. Did you go back to your house, or did you go back to your parents' house? Back to my house. Okay. Okay. What else was that? Going on 11 Island. Okay. Um, and when you got back there, what did you do? I sat on the couch, just waited. Can you wait for it? Yeah. Preston admits that when he got back to the house, Liam wasn't there, and he sat on the couch waiting for him. This shows he had ample opportunity to go to the police or to discontinue his involvement, but actively chose not to. He came home twice during work. The first time, he was like, did you do it? Where's my phone? I'm like, freaking out. Just, no, I did it. I don't know where your phone is. And, he just got mad and stormed back out the door. Okay. And then he stopped back home another time, so like we find the house looking for us from. Liam left work a few times that night and was caught on CCTV as he snuck in and out of the back of the restaurant. And then when he came home from work, he told me, okay, follow me. What a little and cowardly we bitch. Went over. He grabbed a safe put it in my car, and then he got Sarah's body into Sarah's car, took her car, had me go meet him, I intersected the bridge. Okay. And when I got up to the bridge, he'd already put her over and okay. um, jumped in my car. He jumped in your car? Yeah. Right. Preston now admits he had the safe they stole from Sarah in his car. Liam obviously trusted him with the money, and they are clearly acting in concert. Had Preston not been a willing accomplice, Liam would have never let him hold the money, which was the motive for the killing. By saying that Liam alone threw Sarah over the bridge prior Man, to Man, he even there, had the money in Preston his wallet like a moron. Preston is trying to make himself not criminally liable for helping Liam dump the body. The detective looks away and down at the table and puts his hand on his head. His body language indicates he knows this part of what Preston is saying is untrue. When he finally got off the work around nine or whatever time it was, and he came home, you and him went back to Sarah's house. Is that right? Um, how did you get to Sarah's house that time? I drove my car up the same way, the same place. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you park your car in He didn't plan house? very well um, if he was um, planning this for six months. Uh, on our street or behind? No, I parked on that dead end behind her property. Okay. And you accessed her property from the back of yard again? Um, so you didn't pull up in front of her house, park in her driveway, and walk in? No. Why, why did you do that? Just Liam told me that there was a camera on the neighbor's house across the street. So okay. Knowing about the neighbor's camera shows that they must have been staking out the area around Sarah's house, and that this was well planned. And you said that um, when you went back to Sarah's house... Hold on, guys. Baby. Can you babysit for me? Yeah. I got to go botties. All right, guys. Okay. Uh, I want the melon baby though. Melon baby though. Yeah, the melon. Yeah. She's gonna scream. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> I don't know how people can just do this. Like these, like it's human beings. 
how they can just have such callous, you know, it's callous to just have this girl. She's the, I mean, it's a foreign, it's just really foreign to my thinking, which is, I guess, why I'm not a killer, okay? But, you know, you have somebody in your passenger seat that you just strangled, and it's like, yeah, I have to get her over that bridge. Like, how does a, it's evil, man. Like, I just, it's weird. Yeah, they do have an agenda. Like, this one, this one is clear, you know? This one's clear. It's money motivated. Yeah, that's true, Autumn, too. That's true. Because they did, yeah, motive, it's usually money. It seems like it's usually money still. We're still killing people over fucking money. I'm a witch! Yeah, I always do that. I like witches. They're hot. Mwah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a witch. That's cool. <laughs> That's what G-Man's going around and saying. Who cares? You, you, you have beliefs in, like, some, some new agey kind of fucking... It, like, I'm, I'm not a witch. Shit. Who cares? No, but... you don't... No, you don't do any spells or rituals or anything. No. No. But even if I was, who fucking cares? Yeah. Um, was Sarah still in the bushes? Was there anybody in the house when you guys went back there? Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the first thing that you guys did when you got back to her house? We're inside and look for his phone again. Okay. And then... Where's my phone, bro? He went upstairs to get the safe. Okay, where was the safe? In her room, I'm assuming. Okay. Did you go with him or no? Where were you? I was downstairs in the living room. Okay. Um, where is the dog at this point? Still in the cage. Okay. What does the safe look like? It says green metal, kind of like a, a Coleman camping. I don't know. Style, which... The Idaho killer was a vegan? Dude. The Idaho killer was a vegan. Hitler was a vegan. Yeah, apparently some details have come out about that. People are saying it's horrible fucking shit. Yeah, I need to look more into that. Very, very bad, gruesome shit. Yeah, I know. I've been hearing that. <laughs> and he ends up in Scranton. Jesus Christ. Man. Right? Uh, How big do you think? Uh, I think I go stuff like that, so. Okay. And, um, did, it, did you need a key to get into it, or was there a combination lock? They had a key, but we busted it up. I had to bust it open. So that came right with a screwdriver. And your house, you're right, Sarah says. A screwdriver, um, man. Now? I knew it was a screwdriver. Buried in the Shark River Park. Pig. Did you bury it, or did you bury it? You bury it. Liam did. With the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money, Lebowski? Yeah, Lebowski, you don't give us the money, you guy who killed the girl. To bury it? Would you be able to show us where that is? You know exactly where it's at? I fuck you! I fuck you! I fuck you! I had enough money to just be like. I fuck you in the ass! Comfortably in my house, tripping, throwing parties all the time, doing whatever the That's what he wants to do, it's for drugs. Dude, be careful, don't drink too much. He killed that girl for drugs. No wonder he killed her. He's a dumb shit drug addict who 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 probably freaking was tripping out and the idea came to his head. You know that type of shit could have happened with dogs? Yeah, the easy. Easy. Fucking easy. We believe is nothing, Nabowski. No, I'm, I'm, I don't like, I don't want you to like, hurt yourself. I'm coming off a bender right now. I was just... A uh, bender? Sort of everything, all kinds of drugs. Be careful. Cocaine, and Adderall, whatever. Be careful. Shrooms, acid. You can't do that too much, but I told you. No, it was... Combined in a mush. No, it was just a uh, experimental world time. Of pain. I've never really done a lot of drugs, so I just wanted to try it all out, trip a little bit, find it myself. We did it, so just stay away from that. Yeah. So, no, seriously, because I don't want you to be stupid after all this. When you arrived there, and you thought behind that from Sarah's car, where was Liam? He was on the sidewalk. On what an idiot. The car, okay. He's completely reckless with his life. Just stand there with the car. Okay. 
And when you pulled up, wish I was still in the car. <laughs> Liam need help. Pete, Did you I have to help Liam? Love, dude. Because I know he said that he couldn't drag her and he needed help. Did you have to help him lift her over? Yeah, he had her on the sidewalk. I just talked to him. Okay. How do you mean he had her on the sidewalk? She was sitting there? Like half out of the car. Okay. So he was having trouble over there? Like, all right, so you helped him lift her and throw her over the bridge? Okay. Um, what the fuck, dude? Was that dude? hard to do? Physically, to get her over the bridge. Well, Preston changes his story. First, he claimed Liam threw Sarah's body in alone, but now he admits that he helped. Notice that Preston reenacts a throwing motion with his arms. He may not even be aware he did that, as people are less likely to lie with their body than their words. Do you know about what time Sarah went over the bridge? We know what time we, the, we found her car. Yeah. Um, I was there at 10 <laughs> You, you're just kind of guessing based on uh, obviously the distance. I want to say it was 10 30, just off of memory and okay. like relative sure. time. Um, now, what did you guys do after that, like that night? What did you guys do? Did you guys party? Did you drink? Smoke? Yeah, we went back to the house, drank and smoked a little bit. Okay. He crashed the safe and started counting money. Okay. How much money was in the safe? It was 10,000. 10,000? Yeah. All right. Did you see the money? Only ten thousand. A lot of really old, beat up, torn up money. And do you know why it was old and beat up? Just because it was sitting in that box in Sarah's other house. Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what were the denominations? Twenty fifty pennies. Okay. Um, now, do you know? Um, did Liam tell you where the money came? Obviously, it came. Sarah found it, but did you know where Sarah was keeping the money? She should have never told these guys. Yeah, he said that she had, uh, yeah. why did she? Because okay. they were friends. Friends, yeah. Okay, what did he tell you about that? You're not gonna think. He said he didn't know for that reason. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, but he would. I didn't really believe. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the money. There's ten thousand. Did did uh, how much of that money did he give to you? Three grand. Three grand. Okay. Have you spent the money? Do you still have it at the house? I spent half of the, um, just a really big summer weed. And weed? The rest, he I spent it on weed, man. Yeah. Um, and so did you and Liam went to, uh, to bury the money together? Did you, what did you use? To, did you need to use a shovel or were you, like, how big did you keep this all? It really isn't keep it all. We just started that house. And the safe is in the, in the ground there. Yeah, I, I'm, I blew up. Yeah, like a marker I, or something like that. Would you know place, where man. it's? There's, I don't really know how to describe it. But there's like courtyards, like. It's in fucking fake these job, huge dude. Of dirt. They're like have walls, like retaining walls. Okay. And in one of those, it's just in that very corner, just like buried under some dirt. Okay. It's always very useful to get detailed information about things that only the perpetrator would know. It's also very useful for trial to have the money, as it was the motive for this crime, and introducing the money they stole into evidence will help sway a jury. You said there's another safe that's buried in Shark River Park? What safe is that again? That was the safe that we got from Sarah, and that just has a few loose articles of clothing. But, but they were on their own, like, spoiled from... Yeah, okay. Are they Sarah's clothing? All right. When you say soil, what do you mean? They said that there was just dust and like lava and air. Okay. Did he tell you that Sarah threw up on herself? Oh, that what poor girl. That? Yeah, she really threw up on herself. Like, he said she's having like a seizure. Like when he did it, she just started vomiting and she was cheating herself. Did he change her clothing? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Do you know then the clothing that would be in that safe? Do you know like it was just, just like a scarf? Okay, the she was wearing. The boy's actions of burying her soiled clothes show absolute callousness. <laughs> it also yeah. how gruesome the killing was. Tell us what he told you happened when he strangled her. What, what was what was he doing there with her? How did they get there? What were they doing beforehand? That sort of thing. He told me that he was at her house. I don't know what the scenario was. Such but a piece of shit, isn't he? 
and she led the way and just grabbed her from behind. Okay, and what did he do when he went out the door? Okay, and before she went out the door, what did he do? That is so sad. Grabbed her, pulled her back, and <coughs> straddled her. Did he describe it to you? Did he, like, tell you what happened? Do you know what part of his body he used to strangle her? His hands. He told you that? And where did he put his hands? Uh -huh. um, did he do anything else there? Did he tell you that you assaulted her in any way? No. Um, Liam and, and um, Sarah were friends for a long time, right? Yeah. How, how, I mean, how would you describe their relationship? Uh, like really good childhood friends up until high school, and then just kind of group this thing. Okay. Um, did he ever hook up with her, go out with her, or anything like that? <laughs> uh, did he ever express an interest in doing that? No. Do you know if she liked him, like wanted to go out with him or anything like that? Uh, so I know you had said that he did this for the money. Did he think he was going to get? Ten thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. How much money did he think he was going to get from this? All of it. Um, all of it. That was all of it. Was what he described as anywhere from like fifty thousand to five thousand dollars. Um, what are the other reasons why he chose Sarah rather than the money? Is there a thrill involved in it? This is something he's always wanted to do. Hmm. No, no, it was just it was for the money. Yeah. It was just for the and money, yeah. The money for wow. Uh, Kill your friend, lifelong friend, for money. Because she didn't share it with him. Did he owe anybody money? Uh, other than that, uh, okay. um, was he was he having a problem? Like, would he have concerns about <laughs> paying rent? Like, it was just like, a, was he worried about money? I'm just uh, trying to get a feel for what, why. Not really. Has. He had money in that bank at the time. Is he like the type of guy that's always down on like money, like doesn't have money, borrow money from people all the time right now? No, it's always, it's always got some money on top of it. The detective is asking these questions to show how senseless the killing was, and that he didn't actually even need money. Did you know when you went off to work that day or the night before, did you know that this was going to happen, that he was going to do this? Did he, had he been talking about it? Had he been... The first time he said it, it was just like a... Like Insanity. Of other people, and it just seemed like a joke. And then he <coughs> mentioned it again. And then it was just that day, and he was like, hey, I did it. I need your help. Okay. The detective is again trying to show premeditation so that first-degree murder can be charged. Good. Do you remember when Charge him. I hope he gets so you. much time. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to but the bank something Sarah. tells me he's not because he's a rich house. boy. Is it, is that, do you remember him saying that to you? They like Muslims, to cater to so the rich boys. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Don't tell me. So the day they I don't want to know. Did he tell you beforehand or he told you after? He told me like, while I was going on. Like while he was with Sarah. So she were talking to him? I was at work and she had said he's with Sarah. And he thinks that this might be his chance. Okay. Did you ask him any questions about her? No. No? Did you know what he was referring to? Yeah. The detective has built a very strong case against Preston by asking him specific questions concerning his knowledge of the crime. Were you, were you supportive of him doing this so you can get some of the money? Whoa, just one more. Thank okay. You. Notice the extensive pause Preston takes before answering this <laughs> question. <laughs> if you were, it's okay. I didn't really think it was going to happen. So, actually, did. The detective tells him if he supported Liam's actions, it's okay, as he can see Preston is having a hard time admitting he was okay with it. Preston just says, it happened. That's contradictory to all his previous statements. It happened. Show this had been discussed and planned for months. You know, it when just it happened. Work that night, how did he look to you? Was he, he was sober, right? Yeah. Was he fucked up, drunk, high? No, he was completely sober. Just, was that? He was completely sober, just really frantic. Okay. Um, so do you think during the day, like, he was sober when he did this and just went to work and came home, and then that's when you guys started partying and hanging out? He rather just a little bit during the day, but... Okay, he seemed fine to you when... Yeah. When he was coming home from work to check to look for his phone, he seemed okay to you. <coughs> okay. 
This line of questioning is meant to defend against any diminished capacity defense Liam could possibly try to raise at trial. There was a lot of search efforts that were made to find Sarah. Um, one, there was the community came together and put together a big, work, big organized search. Did you participate in that? Okay, he Liam participated in the search. Okay. Um, and what's the reason why? What did Liam tell you? He participated <clears throat> in the fucking search. What the fuck? That is beyond disturbing. Could you imagine they're searching for this girl in the right next to the dude who helped kill her? That's insane. What the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? about why you guys did that. So just look good to anyone who's got their eyes on him. Liam said that to you. Yeah. Did you agree with him? Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you guys do? We went to the search party when it started. Fucking loser. We got split off into a group. We started walking down the beach. The detective is getting Preston to admit to a lot of compelling evidence and their state of mind during and after the crime. This will be very useful for the jury to hear. It shows they had no remorse for what they did after the fact and were able to put on an act in front of their family. Yeah. Has Liam ever done this to anybody else? Um, has, has he upset about what happened? What's his overall affect about what he did? Is he sad? Is he depressed? I think it's is he fucked up how getting counseling, the therapy? Yeah. Uh, just it's very fucked up. Man. Quit his job afterwards and it's just been paying out. Yeah, we need to stop <laughs> this shit. Um, how do you feel about everything that happened to Sarah? I don't really know. Are you upset about it? Yeah. Do you think about it? A lot. This has been weighing on you. Yeah. I know this isn't easy for you right now. What do you think about? I think about what it means for me if anyone did come back to us. Did you think it was going to? Liam did a pretty good job with convincing me that she covered everything up. Just went off. Has he spoken to you about it? I don't <laughs> think obviously you guys talk about it every day, but does he tell you that he's upset about it? Does he tell you that he regrets it? Does he say anything like that? Yeah, he doesn't say anything about it. Okay. Have you noticed a change in his demeanor or his attitude? I mean, or is he just going on with his life like normal? He's going on with it like normal, but it's definitely it's just got like, I don't know, like, more of an ego. More of an ego, yeah. He's cocky so, about it. Just, okay. The detective is trying to see if Preston has the capacity to show any emotion or remorse for what he and Liam did. He has shown almost no affect whatsoever during this interrogation. Preston only discusses his concern about getting caught and is solely focused on how this crime could possibly impact him. He doesn't even mention Sarah or her family. Preston displays the traits of a narcissist and possibly a sociopath. Having more of an ego since the murder but otherwise acting normally indicates that Liam is likely a psychopath and definitely a narcissist. Oh, yeah. Liam being arrogant about this crime is a sure sign of a serious personality defect. I've done acid once, but I had a bad acid trip. Yeah, don't, don't trip. Uh, I did acid, and the cops came and took Preston to interrogate him. Oh, so you were on acid? I was on acid, and first of all, I come out of the shower, Preston's mom's on the couch talking to him, they're all, like, secretive, and I just go in my room, I'm freaking out, like, what the f*** is she doing over here? She leaves, next thing I know, the entire Belmar police force is at my f door taking Preston away. Like, I thought they were arresting him, they were gonna get, he was gonna tell them everything. 
Being safe from Florida. Being safe from Florida. I was losing my shit when I was tripping. Like, it's not a good, that's no, a good thing, you gotta stay away from hey, that. Hey, Ted. Shit. Where was Liam's phone? You say he lost his phone. Where was that phone? So in fact, trial phone. Did he find it or somebody found it? So in fact, trial phone. Um, now did he... When did, when, do you know when he No, Mahoney said he found it in the driveway. It was the next morning he got it back. Okay. And we say Mahoney, the detective from Belmar. Yeah. Um, hang on here, we're just going to take a quick break, make sure we don't have any other questions for you, okay? Okay. You want a water, a bottle of water or anything? I'll be great. Okay, we got it. We'll be right back, okay? Right. Thanks, person. He, he puts his knows hand he's his busted. Head and down on his knees. Which shows a sign of resignation and exhaustion. Yeah, yeah. The suspects will often cry or show emotion once over. left alone in the interrogation room. He knows. Preston still shows almost no emotion and appears pensive and almost looks bored. Preston begins drumming his hands on the back of the chair. Loser. This may be a sign of stress and self-soothing, but comes across as very strange after he just confessed to conspiring to rob and kill his friend and helping to dispose of her body. He begins to loudly bang out a song with his hands on the chair legs for the next few minutes. It's rather eerie to watch. There's a guy in solitary that did that for hours on the fucking sink. Hey, you okay? Yes. Hey, me too. Uh, I just have a couple more questions for you and we'll be all finished up, okay? Um... Some, some maps in here. Where, where, looking at this aerial photograph, can you circle the area, put a circle around the area where the bushes <laughs> are that you dragged Sarah to? Okay. Okay. Um, and can you just write Sarah next to there? Okay. Right, and that's where, that's, that's where you, you moved her to? Mm -hmm. So you, which, and, and the door is where? Right. Okay. Well, this is like an automobile, that kind of thing. Okay, and that, and so you dragged her all the way forward to the, towards the right? Yeah. Okay. Just, can you just put your signature on the back of that for me, please? And I'll um, just put today's date on there as well. The detectives return with maps and photographs to solidify the statements he gave. This is the final stage of the read technique. Having the suspect point to maps or sketches of the scene and returning the suspect back to the scene or reenact the crime are commonly used at this confession stage. It's vitally important to back up the truthfulness of the confession with independent corroborating evidence, such as disclosing key facts of the crime, which would only be known to the perpetrator and investigators, or turning over critically implicating evidence. Well, we're hoping that you're going to um, be able to take us to show us these locations. Would you be agreeable to that if we put you in a car? Would you take us, take us just to these spots so we're not having to go out and look? Yeah. All right. Um, and obviously, this is what we're doing here, Preston, is obviously we want to be able to give the family some closure. Um, Sarah's family is devastated by her loss, obviously. Um, you know, I'm sure you can understand that. Yeah. Um, so everything and anything that we can do um, for them is, is important. How are you communicating um, with Liam? Are you guys communicating on the phone? Are you guys communicating by, like, radio, portable radios? What were you guys using to communicate? He bought walkie-talkies. What's that? He bought walkie-talkies. Okay. He bought walkie-talkies. Walkie like, uh, wait, where, where why didn't he just go into talkies? the military yeah, and do stupid-ass stupid things in the military? Okay, so one's in your car? Yeah. And where's the one that he has? And then somewhere in the house. Okay. Do you know what brand they are? Maybe he's okay, crazy he for them? that. Well, uh, okay, did he buy them specifically for this? I was seven, sir. Okay, did he tell you that? Did he say, hey, I bought these walkie-talkies so we can talk <laughs> when, we, when, we, when I do this? And we, or, no, he came in a walkie-talkie. Like, when we were going over the bridge, he was like, yeah, better off not using phones. Okay, so did he give you the walkie-talkie before you left Sarah's house? Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you guys use them? Yeah. Okay, what kind of things were you guys communicating about? They just said, I'm coming up on the bridge, and I said, okay, I'm coming up behind you, and... It's like, I right, hurry up because I'm not, because I can't get this over myself. I pulled up behind me. This is another compelling piece of evidence <coughs> that goes towards premeditation and the depth of my view into this crime. But <coughs> it is that Liam bought these specifically for this crime.
This also indicates that Liam may have intentionally left his phone or was planning to leave it at home so his whereabouts aren't trackable. When you spoke to Liam and Liam told you that he was with Sarah and that today may be the day that he was going to do it, however he explained, expressed that to you, um, how did he tell that to you? Did he tell that to you on the phone? Your text message it's on Snapchat. On Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, uh, yep. The <laughs> there you go. Okay. There's fucking now, murders Liam being planned. Can you on Snapchat a lot? I'm never going on Snapchat. Fuck Snapchat. What's his Snapchat? I'm staying away name. from all these places that are like um, fucked up. Liam Katazi something. Okay, does he have one account or does he have more than one account? I think he says the one. This is relevant as Snapchat messages disappear after a brief amount of time. The detective asks if Liam normally uses Snapchat to communicate to try to show that he purposely used it in this instance because it would disappear quickly and isn't stored like a message. I know reading Miranda writes everything that all is um, under arrest. What's um, so there's no your situation right now is there's no there's no complaints filed against you right now. Um, after we're done talking to you, um, basically what happens is we make it, we'll have to consult with our supervisors and we'll have to come to a decision from a legal perspective. An assistant prosecutor would make a decision as to what charges um, would be filed against you. Okay. Um, you've been today. Um, we appreciate that, Preston. Uh, I know this wasn't easy for you to do. Um, I think you, I think you understand that um, what you did today was um, a very positive thing. Um, not only for yourself, because you've been carrying this burden and you've been walking around every day since this happened with this weight on your shoulders. Um, I look at you today, um, and I remember seeing you on December 7th when I spoke to you, and you look like a different person. Um, I would imagine you have some relief. Uh, I can't imagine what it must feel like every single day waking up in the morning, um, especially knowing that you have a sister. Um, looking at yourself in the mirror every day, I'm sure it was not an easy thing for you to do. Am I right? Yeah. Um, I can tell you, um, I think <coughs> you did the right thing here. Um, I feel like you wanted to do the right thing in December when we spoke to you. I remember looking at you. I remember how upset you were that night. Right. Um, I... I think you're, you're a young guy, man. You're 19 years old. I think you have, you have many kids. years ahead of you. You have a long life ahead of you. And I think, um, I think by doing this, you're able to put yourself in a position where you can, you'll be able to move on. Uh, I hope you feel that way. Um, we appreciate, as I said to you earlier, that your cooperation. And, um, you know, from when, when we saw you the first earlier today to. We brought you down here. Um, you've been nothing but respectful and cooperative, and we appreciate that. It was the same thing when we spoke to you out, at, um, out in Delmar. <coughs> All right. The detective knows he has enough to arrest Preston at this point, but wants him to cooperate and take them to the crime scene. So he makes it seem like this decision has not been made yet. The reality is that his arrest is not a question of if, but when. The detective yeah. is trying to elicit emotion from Preston yeah. by mentioning his sister and how much of a burden this must have been for him to carry around. Preston has given them a solid case, but he may be needed to prove the case against Liam. Yeah, I don't care. His cooperation could benefit him if he will testify for the state. If the state needs an accomplice to convict the main actor, they will I'm often give them a lighter thing, sentence man. in exchange for their testimony in court. Would you be able to bring us to where Sarah's body is, Preston? I don't know where her body is, but in the safes. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you already explained to us where you, she was thrown over the bridge. Yeah. Okay. All right. We appreciate that. Um, let me just go uh, get our cars ready and we'll, uh, we'll take a ride. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Big baby. When the detectives leave, Preston finally shows some emotion and cries momentarily. This appears to be out of stress and because he knows he will likely be arrested since he already asked about that. 
Preston never says anything about regretting what he did or express any kind of remorse. It's disturbing that he could do this to a childhood friend and a person he took to prom over some money. He had ample opportunity to report Liam, as well as the opportunity to discontinue his involvement. Right. Preston made decision after decision <clears throat> to continue with the crime. Liam is the mastermind behind this, but Preston was intricately involved. It seems unlikely Preston would have done something like this without Liam, whereas Liam seems like he would have done this no matter who was or wasn't involved. Following the interrogation, the detectives take Preston to exactly where he and Liam threw Sarah's body off the bridge and into the river. Note the eerie and emotionless way Preston reenacts how he helped Liam lift her body and throw it, even miming the motion with his hands. My name is Detective Ryan Weisbrot with the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. I'm currently located in my county-issued vehicle uh, parked behind the Neptune City Police Department. Uh, present in the car is Detective Nicholas Catalona of the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office Forensic and Technical Services Bureau, along with uh, Preston Taylor and Preston Taylor's attorney, uh, John Perrone. Uh, what was the purpose of traveling to the bridge? To dispose of Sarah's body, throwing it off of the bridge into the marina. And what was your route of travel from Sarah's house to the Route 35 bridge? I made the right off of Midwood Street onto Steiner, straight to the intersection on 35, and made a left and continued straight to the Belmont Bridge. Okay. And um, are you aware <coughs> if Liam traveled to the Route 35 bridge on the same route that you took? No, he took another roundabout way to <laughs> avoid being seen on any storefront cameras along 35. Okay, Preston, we are currently approaching the base of the Route 35 bridge on the Neptune Southampton side. Can you please um, identify the location where Liam had parked Sarah's storage vehicle on December 2nd, 2016? Yeah. Yeah, right over here. Now I'm pulling my vehicle off to the shoulder of the roadway. Liam had lifted Sarah's body by the shoulders and gotten her partially up onto the curb where I then grabbed her by the legs. He... shoulders and hoisted her up onto the railing and then I pushed her feet over so that she was going over the rest of the way. Are you confident that her body went over the bridge prior to getting to this equipment? Yes. Do you remember seeing this equipment? Yes. Okay. Specifically that like cone-shaped radar piece right there. About a week and a half later, yeah, the police right? then take like, Preston to Sarah's house to do a walkthrough this is so, so that he could style. show them what he did the first time he arrived at her house to move her body and look for Liam's phone. Crazy. Uh, we're along the back fence, and I parked my car just right over here and top the fence right here. Okay. <sighs> I was informed beforehand that the back door would be left unlocked. Okay, who told you that? Late. Okay. And I entered. Uh, when I entered. Uh, you entered with the lights on in the house? Or are they off? The lights back here are off, but the kitchen and the room are off. Kind of extremely low okay. voice. And I know. This door was closed. <laughs> this one I couldn't get open, but I was able to push this one open. Enter. And. Sarah was slumped in this corner right here. God okay. bless her, um, man. Again, behind this door. Preston, you said, no, there's these two bifold doors here. The door to the left was in what position? It was closed. Okay. And did you try to open it? I tried to. I was only able to get it about that far and realized that she was behind the door. Okay. And how about the right door? Were you able to open that fully? Yes. Okay. And uh, where, how was Sarah's body positioned in this bathroom? She was sitting like this, tucked into the corner and leaning over the toilet. Okay, and her feet were where? Sticking out into the room. Okay. My first reaction, I left her, and I went to go throughout the house and look for the nearest phone. Okay, you can take us to where you are looking at home. This is bullshit, here. man. 
Is your body just naked in there now? Like, maybe. Like sitting it this way. Because like, they just both have their clothes, right? Right. The dog was in its kennel as it is right oh, now. Oh, okay, where was the dog's kennel at the time? Right there. And at first, I just looked in this general vicinity. I looked under the couch. What are you looking for when you're in here? Liam's phone. Okay. Uh, when you were in this room, did you take note of anything that was out of the ordinary or in disarray? Yeah, it looks like a firefighter outfit. I mean, it's actually from a police like department. Not the yeah. same ones, but okay. Probably for an inmate. Similar clutter. Okay. You know. Yeah, and probably. From there, but that is weird looking. I looked MCD. up here, opened the closet to see if it had slipped under the door, closed it, and then continued upstairs and into Sarah's room where I searched. Just on the floor and on top of everything here. Like these people the have no shame. And amongst all the clutter on this half of the room. And I didn't see the phone anywhere, so I went back down to where Sarah was. Okay. In, um, prior to coming here, did Liam or anyone else tell you where you would find Sarah? Liam told me that she would be downstairs by the back. Okay. And did he specifically say where downstairs by the back? He didn't. But okay. I didn't take much looking to find her. Okay. And then once I got back down here, I picked her up under the shoulders and hoisted her up. And I dragged her backwards out this door. She was been facing away and I had my arms under her shoulders like this. Okay. Uh, so were her feet dragging on the, on the ground? Yeah. Okay. And then I carried her over here, dragged her over here, and kind of sat her under the bushes right here. These are the bushes that you place Sarah in? Mm-hmm. Okay, and yes. how, did, how did you position her when you brought her out here? She was just laying on her side like this. Okay, in which direction was her face? Facing outward, Okay. and with her feet down here and her head up here. Okay, so her head was up here, and, and her face was facing... God. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, I jumped the fence where I had entered. Okay, if you can take us back to that area. I jumped back over the fence. I got in my car, turned around, and went out that way. <laughs> Immediately after, Preston then did a second <clears throat> to reenact what happened when he and Liam returned together after Liam finished work. I waited right here where I could see the car, plus... What's going on with the lights in the house? And what was the purpose of you being here the second time? Just to keep watch and make sure everything went smooth. Okay, and uh, why did Liam come back here with you? What was your purpose in being here? To move Sarah's body too. Okay. Um, you, during your second trip, did you go inside of Sarah's house? No. And um, did Liam go inside the house? Liam went inside the house to get the safe and <coughs> out front. And he does look like a firefighter. Okay. I don't know why he's wearing that. It says MCPD. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he was cold. And they gave him a jacket to wear. Maybe. Okay. Um, so Liam went inside the house. Did he get the safe? Yes. Okay. What door did he go inside the house in? He entered through this back door. Okay. And did you see him come out of the house with the safe? No. Okay. What door did he come out of with the safe? The front door. Okay. And what did he do with the safe when he came out of the house? He came out the back door, not the front door. Okay. And he gave me the safe. Okay. And I put the safe back over by where we jumped the fence. Okay. So you walked the safe back over there? Yes. Okay. And so we came over here to where Sarah was left. Right under these bushes here. We pulled her out. And he picked her up to start dragging her. Yeah, exactly. It's reflective, so if he runs, they can still see him. I grabbed her yeah, legs exactly. and got her over to the fence. That's correct. So yeah. you have, you're carrying Sarah by her legs, or her legs He's dragging on the ground, or are they up in the air? No. I was, yeah. like, holding them up okay. in the air. And what part of Sarah's body was leaning for? Her torso. Okay. And she carried her over to this fence near the safe was, hoisted her up and over. Threw the safe over, the two of us jumped over, 
and I got in my vehicle, and they got in this girl a lot, this fucking exhaust Sarah's vehicle. Fucking I know, right? And, um, when you say you hoisted Sarah, what you weigh? Explain how you did that and what what happened. I have no idea. Liam jumped over the fence much. first. You're just lugging her around, man. I lifted her up. He grabbed her by the torso <laughs> from the other side of the fence. <laughs> as I lifted her legs up. So, did you help him put Sarah in the car? I helped him <coughs> keep her in while I got the door closed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and how was she positioned in the car? Sitting upright. Okay. Um, did she have a seatbelt on? No. Okay. Man, um, if somebody were driving down the road and looking into that car, would uh, they? Yeah, would I they guess. Well. They would have seen yeah. Liam driving a car and Sarah. I mean, lay off the paper. Okay. She was asleep, asleep in the passenger seat. Okay. Sarah's body has never been found. It's your life. You might as well make it one. <laughs> what, are you going to live some boring-ass life? I don't feel any different. And I don't think about it. You always think you're gonna try these new things and you're gonna change. Right? Like murdering change. someone? It just doesn't do anything. Like tonight, we were gonna potentially kill a bunch of people and, and get a bunch of drugs and money and nothing. It's weird. He was gonna kill again. Yeah. Get a bunch of drugs and money. Well, it was good seeing you, brother. When I come back down, let's fucking do something. He, he, it's, listen, look at him. He's safe, alright? Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. Listen. I'm not going to let Preston do anything dumb. I did something really dumb, and I planned it out for half a year. I, I have patience. I got it. It's good talking to you, bro. It's good talking. Take it easy, bro. Safe travel, man. Psycho. You got everything? No, that's uh, a true psycho. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, killing is like, just, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know, I'll kill you. I know that. He just does not care. Is that... Liam McCatasney was charged with first degree murder, first degree felony murder, first degree robbery, second degree conspiracy to commit robbery, second degree disturbing or desecrating human remains, and second degree hindering apprehension. Wow. Liam's attorney tried to have the secret recording where he confesses excluded from evidence at the trial. They argued that the person uh, who made the recording was acting as an agent of the police. And if you'll remember, Liam was represented by an attorney at the time, so therefore he should not have been questioned about Sarah. The video was still shown in court. Wow, they still used Preston it. took a plea yeah. to wow. against Liam. He said that Liam claimed Sarah had the type of money somebody would kill for, and that he originally planned to get her drunk and take the money. During his own trial, Preston apologized for his part in Sarah's death. Though he addressed his statement to Mr. Stern and all those who had the blessing of knowing Sarah, Sarah's father didn't want to hear anything Preston had to say. Good As for he him. spoke, Michael walked out of the courtroom with his girlfriend, Christine Eckert. Preston also apologized to Sarah and called her a very beautiful young woman who didn't in any way deserve the end you met. Her father only returned once Preston was done talking. In 2019, Preston Damn. Tanner was sentenced to 18 years in prison. He must serve at least 85% of the sentence, about 15 years, before he can be considered for parole. Also, in 2019, then 21-year-old Liam McCatasney was convicted of Sarah's first-degree murder, conspiracy, tampering with evidence, and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Why are you guys he also received an additional 10-year sentence for the desecration of human remains that, that one will dude's run consecutively 18 years, to his life sentence. But good. He will never get out of prison. Good! Fuck him! Wow. He eventually admitted. He, f he freaking deserved that. Wow. That was nuts. Heck yeah, man. That was nuts. Yeah, man. This dude. Like, fuck him. Wow. What a psychopath. He's just bragging about it, and he has no remorse. No. None. None at all. Mm-mm. Enjoy prison for life, asshole. You deserve it. You earned it. Horrible. Disgusting shit. All right, guys. We're going to head to bed. 
and I'll see you guys tomorrow. You know, peace and Maranatha, guys. It's been a good stream. Yeah. Yeah. I love you guys. Thank you for all the support and everything. You're just like really touching my heart. I hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope it doesn't go bad. So, praise Jesus. Jesus bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye and good night. Good night.